So combustion reactions, and like I said, this might be a little review. Uh, there's only three things that you have to remember, because uh, one of them you'll remember no matter what, but uses oxygen, okay? And the major products are carbon dioxide and water. Now, when you exhale, what are you exhaling? Carbon dioxide and water. It comes from the same overall reaction. It's like a combustion reaction in your body um, that takes uh, hydrocarbon, or I'm sorry, hydrocarbon, takes um, carbohydrates and converts them into carbon dioxide and water. And we are warm blooded, and that's where the heat comes from. Okay? So heat is the byproduct of a combustion reaction. You'll notice they put a little delta on the top. The delta on the top means this reaction is slow, so we heat it, which means you throw a match on it in this case, or you ignite it, and then that provides the energy to start the reaction, but once you've done that, the energy from the reaction actually just keeps it going. So that's why you could light the alcohol. The alcohol starts burning, and it doesn't stop until it's completely gone. Okay? So we are going to cover three kinds of reactions. One is a combustion reaction. Another is a dehydration reaction. And then finally, we're going to cover oxidations of alcohols and thiols. <clears throat> and it's kind of a detail. Combustion is actually an oxidation reaction. But we're not going to call it that. Anyways, when's the last time you balanced an equation? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I'm going to go and show you how that I would do these. Okay. I'll give you one example of a hydrocarbon or uh, an alcohol combustion reaction. And I will just write it up here. Let's see. What alcohol should I use? I don't want to use ethanol because I'll use, let me do butanol. So butanol would be C. H3, CH2, 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 OH. And now what I'm going to do is to simplify my life, I'm going to reduce that to a molecular formula. Because the combustion reaction doesn't care that it's a structural formula or a line drawing. Uh, when you do the balancing, just reduce it down to its molecular formula. So that's going to be C4. H, 10, and O. I think I did that right. Yeah, that's 10. Good. Oh, it's been a long day. So, and then a combustion reaction. So write the balance combustion reaction for butanol. I just have to add oxygen to it. I'm going to get CO2. And I'm going to get water. So now when you learn to balance equations back in the good old days, you made a list and all that stuff. But for alcohols, there's a trick. Just balance them in the order C, H, and O. And then you don't have to do all the bookkeeping that you had to do before. Okay. So I'm going to do C first, then I'm going to do H, and then I'm going to do O. So, and then you start with the alcohol. You can do this with all hydrocarbons, by the way. Uh, but you don't have any O in terms of um, in the hydrocarbon. So I have an O, and I'm going to start with my C. And so how many CO2s do I need? All right, so I'm going to take this and put a 4 here. And then I'm going to take the H's and do them. So how many H's do I need? I need to have 10, right? But it's coming as H2O, so I need five of those. So this is, all right, for that. And now all I have to do is balance the oxygens. And at this point, you might want to do a little bit of bookkeeping, right? So I have, the way I'd like to do it here is I have one oxygen here. I have two here, which I'm going to ignore for a little bit. And then in the CO2, I have how many? Eight. And in the H2O, I have five. 
So I have 13 over here, right? So now think about it like this. I have one here. I have two times a number because I have to balance the oxygen, and that's going to be 13. That'll tell me what the coefficient is. For the oxygen, I need 6. And like I said, this is kind of a trick in doing balancing of hydrocarbons or alcohols, but gosh, it's just a lot easier than adding all those things up over and over and over again. So carbons first, hydrogen second, and then look to see how many oxygens you need beside the one that's already in the alcohol, okay? I could have put X there if you wanted. Any questions? Is this only for combustion reactions, not any other? Oh, hydrocar any hydro anything with CH, and it's a combustion. So it could be CH and O, right? CH, CH and two O's. It could be anything like that. And you just do C's first, H's, and then you balance the O's. Good? Good. All right. Now, we have to talk about something called a dehydration reaction, and alcohols undergo dehydration. Well, when you get dehydrated, what left your body? Water. And in an alcohol, you have an OH and an H. And those form a water. And when those leave the structure, okay, what you're going to end up with is an alkene because those two guys, when they leave, they put leave behind this double bond. So you already had a single bond on the left, and when you got rid of the H and the OH, you made the second bond for the double bond, okay? The ingredients for it, okay, what you have to have to make a dehydration reaction work, well, when do people become dehydrated? When it's cold and rainy? when it's hot. So one of them is heat, okay? Which is sometimes symbolized as a delta. And H plus refers to an acid. Now, there are a lot of different acids you could use for this reaction, but most typically it's a combination of sulfuric acid and phosphoric acid. So recognize when it says H plus and that means acid, it might actually be written as H2SO4 or H3PO4 or both. So let's write a dehydration reaction for um, the one that I'm about to show you. The molecule at the bottom of the slide on the left side, okay? And then I'll go into what Zaitsev's rule is. But that's 2-pentanol, so let me draw 2-pentanol out. No, I'm just drawing it out, and then we'll go back to the slide so you can copy it. Because it explains, like, what the product is, and then I'll just show you what, that there's possible, two possible products, and we'll look at Zaitsev's rule to figure out, oh, that's what that's saying. Okay, so don't panic yet. Or you can panic, it's fine. I'm not going to stop you. Usually when people are panicking, it's impossible to stop them. Is this talking about, like, in the book where it's, like, he went over it a little bit, too? Was it like 90%? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, actually, I wanted to draw this a little bit differently. So don't, don't get carried away yet. I am going to pull out my eraser, and I'm going to erase that one. I'm going to erase that one. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw the, an H on this side and an H on this side, okay? And then a 2 down here. So I actually just drew the H's out. So in a dehydration reaction, right, I said you get rid of the H, the OH, and the H that's next to it. But in 2-pentanol, it's got H's on both sides. So there's two possible products for this reaction. So let me draw them out. 
like this. If I take this one off, that pair off, the product that I get will be down here on the left. So I'll put the hydrogen back. And then if I take the one on the right off, like this, then I'll get products down here. It looks like this. You can simplify this, you can really simplify it into, instead of CH2 to CH3, right? You can do that. Like, oh, no, wait. Yeah, this one at the end, is that what you're talking about? Yeah. Yeah, I drew one out, so I had to make that CH2 and H. On the, on the previous slide, they had just drawn it as CH3. Okay. okay. But you can do it? Yeah, sure. I just drew one of the bonds out instead of all of them. So think about what's going on here. There's actually two different products. If you did the alkenes, like I'm hoping you did, this is one pentene. Did you guys do alkenes in nomenclature? Yeah, okay. And this is 2-pentene, right? They're different products. So in an organic reaction, a lot of times you do get two products, but sometimes one's called the major product and one's called the minor product. The major product is the one that you like get the most of, okay? Turns out in this case, the major product is the one on the left. Two pentene. Zaitsev just, it was a long time ago, just did a bunch of experiments, and what he realized was that every time he did a dehydration reaction, okay, the alkene that he got was produced by removing the OH and and H from the carbon with fewer hydrogens. So if you look at the molecule up here that has two H's on it, that one has three H's on it, right? So the real important comparison is to say I have two H's on this side and then I have three H's on this side. So the side on the left is the one with the fewer hydrogens. And that's Zaitsev's rule. Okay. The other way to do it, though, is to look at the product, and the product has more carbons attached to the double bond. You notice this major product that I drew down here, okay? There's a carbon on this side of the double bond and a carbon on this side. On this one, there's a carbon on this side, but there's not one on this side. Now, it's the same, it comes from the same rule and applying the rule the same way, but it turns out the way I'm saying it now is easier to identify in bond line drawings where the final product's going to be. And so I'll give you some examples of those, okay? So questions on this? There's got to be somebody who's saying, I don't understand. Yeah. Okay, good. Well, I mean, it's not good, but let's try to figure this out. Zaitsev said, if you're going to make a double bond, okay, you, you have to take the OH has to go. So, like, there's my OH, right? And then you have to take an H from a neighboring carbon. But there's, there's a hydrogen on this side, and there's a hydrogen on this side. And what he found out was it always comes from the side that has fewest hydrogens. So there's a hydrogen and a hydrogen. Right? There's two hydrogens there. This one has a hydrogen, and there's two hydrogens. So there's three hydrogens there, right? That's where the three comes with. So the double bond, then, is you take the hydrogen from the left and the OH group, and you form the double bond there. Yeah, the one in white. And so that's the, why the saying goes, the, the poor get poorer, 
Because the ones that have the fewest hydrogens, they lose more hydrogens, okay? Okay, so let's go back to the previous slide. Okay, that's this one. It's actually... On this one, that's why it comes off from this side. Zaitsev rule states that the OH removed and also the NH, I don't know what that came from, the H from the carbon with fewest hydrogens. A double bond is put in their place. The major product is the double bond with the most carbon groups attached. So those are the things that I was saying. Okay. So which side is the hydrogen removed from this one? It's got to be removed from here. Right? And which hydrogen is removed here? To the right. So the double bond goes to the left, right? So, no, so, so the double bond goes to the left on this one because I take this H and this O, and through this one, it goes on the right. Yeah? Not so bad. You're all organic chemists now. Well, you actually, you're all organic chemistry, all organic chemists, because that's all we do in our bodies. Right? By definition. And <clears throat> you're just learning about it now. <laughs> okay. So I have an OH here. I'm going to form the double bond over here. So you'll notice this other part, the major product is a double bond with the most carbon groups attached. Oops, I mean to do that. So on this molecule on the right, what is that molecule? 2-methyl-3-hexanol. All right, I'm going to put a double bond in here, and it's going to have one, two, three carbons attached to the double bond. If I had put the double bond on the other side, so I'm going to make you crazy and do that. If I had put the double bond on this side, right, then it would have had one and two carbons attached. Okay, so this is what the meaning of the second one is, that the double bond with the most carbon groups attached to it. So I'm going to show you why that rule is sometimes much more helpful. Um, I'm not going to do this one because we basically just did that one. I'm going to do the bottom one, okay? And it's a bond line drawing. So how do you deal with bond line drawings? Because remember, the way this rule works is you have to know about the hydrogens, right? Or you have to know about the number of carbons attached to it, okay? So I can draw the product two different ways, and just make sure you don't violate the octet rule, because that does happen occasionally, like when you're trying to draw products. Oops. So I can draw the product. It can be drawn two different ways, and then you tell me which one you think is the the product. Okay, so let me get my little change the color. So which one is the major product? The one on the right. The one on the right. Why the one on the right? Because it has one two, three, carbons attached. Hang on. Just think about it. I'm going to let you look at it. Look at it. Zaitsev's rule says the products has the most carbons attached to the double bond, right? The one on the left, there's my double, there's my double bond, right? Has one and two attached to the double bond. Okay. Now, if you go in and draw the hydrogens, it's true the way we've done it. You know, carbon has to make four bonds. So, like, if you're going to follow Zaitsev's rule the way it was originally written, there's a hydrogen here, and then there's two hydrogens here. And I know that because carbon has to make four bonds. And so there's... One, two, three, four, and there's one, two, three, four. And there's two hydrogens here, and there's one hydrogen here, so the double bond has to go to this side. Right? 
So I'm removing this guy and that guy. And that's what creates that double bond. But the other way to look at it, it's, it, it's the double bond with the most things attached to it. So you can look at the picture on the left. Oops, I mean to point at it like that. You look at this picture on the left, and there's a double bond here. It has two things attached. There's a double bond here, and it has three things attached. So if it didn't have a methyl group, it could go either way. And if it doesn't have a methyl group, it could go either way. Yeah, so let's say it looked like... Oh, so in terms of what we talk about in organic chemistry, this is the major. This is the minor. Because actually you get a little bit of both. All I care about for you guys is pointing out what the major product would be in the dehydration. Okay? But that does mean you have to kind of know which is the major and which is the minor. Would it matter what side that double bond would be at? Well, okay, so yeah, it doesn't really matter um, except that the way I've drawn it, the OH is over here, so it makes more sense to draw it like that. But if I drew it on the other side, same molecule flipped around. Like I'm looking at it from the other side. Okay. Yeah. So let's do another one real quick. I just want to show you. Uh, iterate what she was asking. Um, oh, actually, what do I want to do? I want a blank slide is what I want. Actually, what I want is a burrito. Okay, so uh, let's say it looks like uh, this. That's my alcohol, okay? And I am going to um, do a dehydration. So what do I need for dehydration? Uh, H2O comes out, but what do I put on the arrow? H plus and heat, yeah. If you forget, that's what it takes to make you dehydrated. So now, what's the product look like? Well, you just draw the original molecule, and then you have to figure out the double bond. The double bond could either go to the right, or the double bond could go down. But those are my only two options. Yeah, because there's no methyl. But, but think about, okay, so there's an OH here and an H here and an H here. So I could take it from this side and I get this one. All right? Or if I take it from this side, then I'll get this one. Wait, are you using the double bonds again? Oh, I, let, me, uh, let me draw the H in. So I have an H here. I have two H's there. I'll draw the other one tiny. And then I have another H over here, and I have another H like this, okay? So when I say I'm taking, um, making a double bond, you take these guys out. That's the part of the dehydration. Like this is plus water. So that's what creates the water as you pull that out. And in their place, you put a double bond. So that double bond, the way I've drawn it, where which molecule is that, left or right? Left. Right. right. And if it take the other one, right, and I take it like this, that's the one on the left. So this leads to that one, and this one. And you only have those two products because the, they have the same number of hydrogen. Yes, and so that was the next question. Is one a major or one a minor? No, they're the same because... If I make the double bond here or I make the double bond here, you notice there's two hydrogens here and two hydrogens here. It's the same. So there is no major product. There's just two products. No. So all around, we'll do just hydrogens, right? Yeah, there's two hydrogens on every carbon unless there's a methyl group. By the way, this is a completely different lecture than I did on Monday. So if you want to hear, like, what, some of the examples are the same. I just make up examples as I go along. So if you want to see more examples, just go to the Monday lecture when I put it up and just scroll through it really fast so you get through the area that I was talking about and then watch it for a while. I haven't figured out how to do it or where I would do it, but all of these things that I draw are 
images, and I can store them to a file somehow. I haven't figured that out yet. So that if you wanted the slide that I drew that's not on the slides, it could just be a JPEG file. But I'm catching up to my wife in technology. Okay, good. So, um, so that's dehydration. Now we're going to talk about oxidation and reduction. And we have a very simple definition for oxidation. And the definition means oxidation increase the number of bonds between carbon and oxygen. That's oxidation. When stuff gets oxidized, in biology, that is typically how it gets oxidized. It just bonds more to oxygen. And really, all it's doing is removing hydrogens from a structure. So let me show you how that is. See, here's an alcohol. It's a primary alcohol, right? Primary because this carbon only has one uh, carbon attached to it. And when I do the oxidation, you notice what happens? Now I have two bonds. But when I made the two bonds, what did I lose? I lost a hydrogen here, right, and a hydrogen here. Right, so it's kind of like a dehydration reaction in the sense that you remove one thing from each end and you form a double bond. So that's an aldehyde that's formed. And if you further oxidize an aldehyde, which happens a lot, you get carboxylic acids. So like this is ethyl alcohol, it's a primary alcohol, and in your liver, right, it forms first the aldehyde and then the carboxylic acid through an oxidation process, which is actually facilitated by an enzyme. Our body's good at things like that. All we say at this point is O. O is for oxidation. If you're taking other organic chemistry classes, You'll learn that that means lots of different things, okay? Now, if I'm going from the right to the left, oh, by the way, see three bonds to oxygen here? A double bond and a single bond, that's the carboxylic acid. If you go from the right to the left, that's known as a reduction. What are we reducing? The number of carbon-oxygen bonds, right? So we're going this way. A lot of times we'll just say R. And again... Take another organic chemistry class. That's a lot of different things. You can do that. Um, the other thing, though, I like to point out, like I was just saying, when you're going to the right, you're losing H2. So I'm going to say minus H2. Oh, actually... Um, I won't do that for the last one because it's not apparent where the other one is. But, but very common in, in uh, biology that they'll say that if you lose a hydrogen, that's an oxidation reaction. When you gain a hydrogen, it's a reduction reaction. Okay? So I'm losing hydrogen and gaining hydrogen. Maybe I shouldn't even put the two. That's just too specific. If I just do that, it's better. No. Yeah. Going into reduction, if I'm doing reduction, I'm adding H. If I remember my biology right, you probably had this guy. Before, NADH. NADH is a reducing agent. Well, how does it reduce things? Transfers hydrogens. Okay. Some of these reactions can be done with biological molecules, and they're a little bit more specific and a little bit more controlled. Okay. And there's FADH and NADH and NADPH, and there's a, yeah, 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 yeah. And I thought chemistry is bad. Okay, so for oxidation, you said you were taking away a hydrogen. So mm -hmm. on that first one, where did you take it away from? Because I was writing notes down. Oh, sorry. So <laughs> here, lost that one, and lost one of these. So that's why I got a double bond here. So you're always going to lose two hydrogens? Well, you always lose a hydrogen. It's replaced by an oxygen, okay? But, like, what I'm trying to set you up in your brain for, at least, is in biology it's, or biochemistry, it's typically 
loss of hydrogen and gaining of hydrogen, that's oxidation and reduction. That's the way they talk about it. Okay. And here, right, there's a hydrogen here. It's lost and replaced by an oxygen. So. Now, this is a primary alcohol, and a primary alcohol can go all the way to a carboxylic acid. Now, the secondary alcohol, right, I lose a pair of hydrogens. This is my oxidation process. But you notice, can't be further oxidized. That's the point of this statement. No further oxidation. Why? Because it doesn't have a hydrogen on it. And the H is what's important in the oxidation reduction reaction in this particular kind of molecule. So primary alcohols go to aldehydes and then carboxylic acids. Secondary alcohols just go to ketones, and then they stop. Okay. So let me show you something really quick. So primary, secondary, what's the last kind? Tertiary. Here's a tertiary alcohol. What do you think about the oxidation of a tertiary alcohol? You can't do anything, right? You can't do anything because there's no hydrogen on it. So can't. Yeah, but, it, but that's not. Remember, oxidation is talking about what's happening here, right? And there's no hydrogen there. So it can't do anything. So tertiary alcohols can't be oxidized. Well, unless you light them on fire. But so tertiary. When you're taking away, oh, sorry, when you're taking away hydrogen, you're always taking away from the centers. So yeah, from this carbon on the functional group, you're losing hydrogens here. You lose a hydrogen here, right, and you end up with this carboxylic acid. So, oh, okay, okay. Here, there's a hydrogen here. You lose it. You're losing a hydrogen from here too, but you have to lose something there, because otherwise you can't make the double bond. You lose the hydrogen here, you end up with the ketone. Ketone doesn't have a hydrogen to remove, so the oxidation process stops. Okay? Tertiary alcohol, no reaction. It can't be oxidized. It doesn't have the hydrogen. It can't be pulled off. All you need to remember is you put an O for oxidation and an R for reduction, and you don't need to know all the different reagents that we have for doing that because we have like a whole slew of them that can do that. Okay. So this is a typical example. I would give you, for example, okay, an alcohol and say O, oh, and then you have to provide that. Or I'll give you this and give you this, and you'll have to say, well, what oxidized to give me that? And you'll have to come back to this. So what I tell people to do is make a flashcard. Right? On one side, you're going to put this. And then the other side, you're going to put this. And then you can make another flash card. You know where this is going, right? You're going to put this. And on the other side, you're going to put this. And there's another flash card. <laughs> What's the other flash card? You're going to give, put this, an arrow, and this on the other, and this. And on the other side, you just have to figure out what goes on the arrow. And it's an O. Okay? So three flashcards, because there's like three things that you can change, there's three flashcards that you can make to help you remember it all. And I trust me, by the time you finish writing the flashcards, you'll be like, why did I write these flashcards? Okay, so you can also start with something like this, right? And you oxidize it and you give that. But again... Just in terms of what you should be expected to be able to do on the test, I could give you the carboxylic acid, right, and the O, and then you have to provide me the structure of what made that, okay? So get used to saying like, oh, well, if this was what I made, and I was, something was oxidized to make that, there must have been hydrogen there. Question. This is memorization. Where did your oxygen come from? 
water usually. Yeah. No, yeah, it's a long story, but it's part of the O um, is uh, an oxygen containing chromate usually that it's a long it's a long reaction. And then water gets involved, and yeah. Anyways, uh, <laughs> you're she's in my other organic chemistry class. You're gonna have to know it later, and you'll have to know like all the reaction arrow stuff. You'll have to know all the reaction arrows. So like, obviously something with oxides and something else, so you just have to go back. Yeah, go backwards. Write it. Yeah. So that Okay. So that you'll know that, oh, well, if, if this was something that oxidized for this, this is the last thing that's always added. Okay. So I'll replace that with the hydrogen, and that gives you that. Now, if it was this, and there was an arrow going to this, and it said O, right? Then you'd be like, oh, well, what gave me that? And then you go back from this and get to the alcohol. So you have to remember the sequence in which things go. And you also have to be cognizant, aware of the O or the R. Did that do that? That made like a weird black dot. Anyways, it doesn't matter. <sighs> um, and again, this is for a secondary alcohol. I'll skip over this one. All right. And again, tertiary alcohols, there's no hydrogen available for the oxidation process, so it's not oxidized. So this is a no, let's say no product form uh, in... Uh, Chem 3A or 1A, whatever you took, we would say no reaction. Okay. That's another way you'll see no product form or no reaction. So how come in this one we're, able to, or we're not able to take away the H and the OH, but on the other, in this example, we oh. Because the because you have to be able to take an H from this carbon in order to make a double bond or a, another bond. Because remember, oxidation is more bonds to oxygen, right? So I have to replace something with an oxygen. And so it turns out these guys can't be replaced by an oxygen, and that this already is an oxygen. So if I just took that off, there's no way to put another bond here still. Because how many bonds can carbon make? Four. And this one has four, right? And I can't replace these, so I can't add any more bonds to oxygen, because this already has four bonds. Uh, I'm going to skip this stuff on methanol poisoning, but you should know it, I mean, just for good common uh, knowledge. Uh, drinking methanol, like some pe people do it, drinking methanol is a bad idea, because it gets... Well, it's rapidly absorbed. You can actually absorb it from uh, fumes. And they originally thought about putting methanol in gasoline instead of ethanol. But the problem with methanol is it vaporizes faster than ethanol. So you could be standing at a gas pump and inhaling methanol fumes all the time. Um, that was actually the research my wife did after she got her master's degree. She did research at University of North Carolina. And they studied, like, if how methanol could be inhaled and then transferred into your blood. So, anyways, methanol gets oxidized to formaldehyde. What do we use formaldehyde for? Preserving, Preserving dead body tissues or plant tissues, yeah. Yeah, so nasty stuff. And then formic acid, also very irritating as well. That's, uh, do you want formic, where you find formic acid? in ants. Ant, ant bites have formic acid in them. Okay. All right, so oxidation of thiols is a little bit simpler, but you should know what this guy is called. That's known as a disulfide bridge or a disulfide bond or linkage, right? So a lot of terms we use for this, disulfide bridge, linkage, or if you're a chemist, bond.
And how is it an oxidation? During the oxidation process, these two hydrogens get removed and a bond is replaced, is placed between them. Okay? So these guys leave, and then this bond is formed. I have no idea. <laughs> I'm not sure why that's there. Well, it probably, I don't know. I'm just going to leave it off. I kind of think it's not supposed to be there. I don't know the, like the mechanism, like how it happens. Um, I'd have to think about it. But I don't think a water gets produced. I'll look it up, though. But uh, this is a, a fun one to think about because people that have curly hair have disulfide bridges in their hair that make their hair curly. So the bridges are close together, causes their hair to be curly. So what they do is they put a, a straightening solution into it. It breaks the disulfide bond, and then the hair is straight. Okay. I actually had really, like, jacked up hair this morning. I don't know what my wife has in this bottle, but it's called <laughs> hair straightener, and I'm like... Yeah, let me try a little bit of this. I put it on, and my hair just went whoop, and I'm like, wow. She's suddenly going to be using twice as much of this stuff. <laughs> yeah? I Why did you the two Okay, so the two H's go away, and they're replaced by a bond. Okay. And that's the disulfide bridge. That's an oxidation process. And again, when I was talking about when you lose hydrogen, that's oxidation. right? This follows that pattern of losing hydrogen and you're getting oxidation. So it's just those two are taken off and then those two S's are Yeah, together. those two S's come together and make a bond, yeah. Because they're lonely. I don't know how much more I have, actually, but how are you guys doing okay so far? I only have a little bit more to go. Some of this is just general information. Um, like this, this is a lot of these slides I left just because I thought you should know some of this. Um, but ethanol can be oxidized to ethanol and then to, uh, hmm, they went crazy. There's one step missing. Uh, get converted into acetic acid. And this acetaldehyde and ethanol, that's the same structure, right? Produced from ethanol in the liver is further oxidized to acetic acid, converted into carbon dioxide and water, and the uh, citric acid cycle. So this kind of product, though, in your liver, right, is what causes some of the damage to your liver, especially these carboxylic acids. And they also believe that these uh, aldehydes are partially responsible for, like, the headache you get. Like the hangover? Yeah, some of that. I thought it was, like, dehydration. Well, yeah, it's dehydration, too, because... But you got to drink a lot, I think, to get dehydrated, I think. I'm not positive, but... <laughs> I'm not an expert on this, but... I did go to college. <laughs> I'm going to skip that. So <laughs> let's look at the oxidation products for. So it's just practice, right? That's the rest of this. What's the oxidation product for? 2 butanol. And then what are the other products that are on here? Where the heck they come from? Okay. So what's the oxidation product for 2 butanol? C, I get C. B. B? B. Oxidation means more bonds to oxygen. And that's oxidation. That's the first oxidation step. So the answer for this one is B. But this one, double bond, that's a dehydration reaction. That's the first type of reaction that we study. But in order to go this way, you need H plus and heat. Okay. What's product C? It's That's a combustion. And really to do that, you just need to have heat. 
is dehydration. And uh, what they're showing in D is supposed to be like no reaction. They could have just written no reaction rather than drawing the same molecule twice, but oh well. So in the B, they always take away the two hydrogens that are mixed together right there and the other? The first oxidation step, you take the two hydrogens off. Oh, okay. So starting with the alcohol, you take two hydrogens off and you get a double bond. In disulfide oxidation, take the two hydrogens off, form a single bond between the two sulfurs. But it's the hydrogens. That's why in biology they always talk about, oh, you lose hydrogens or gain hydrogen. Losing hydrogens in biology is oxidation, and gaining them is reduction. Okay. That's the biochemistry pattern. Okay, so they're showing an alcohol, and they are showing two O's. So what's the product, and then what are these other things? Okay? So if it Somebody got an idea? You could just yell letters at. Select the product when this alcohol, right, propanol, undergoes each of the following reactions. So this is the first reaction, then I get a product, and there's a second reaction, I get a product, okay? Oxidizing yet to the first product and oxidizing to the second product. C. D. D. C. Okay, D is the correct answer. Oops, sorry. D is the correct answer. C is what you get there. That's the first oxidation. B is combustion again. And A is dehydration, yeah. And what do you need to do dehydration? Heat and hydrogen, acid, yeah. Yeah, good. So the last slide, yay. This is summary slide, concept map slide. So <clears throat> this whole chapter was about alcohols, phenols, thiols and ethers. You notice we didn't do reactions of ethers. You know why? They don't really react. They can't be oxidized usually, right? They're not very reactive unless you have really strong acid, and you're not going to learn that here. So. so carbon sulfur single bonds, we call those thiols. They undergo oxidation, right? And they form disulfides. So it might be helpful if you wrote something like... Um, just to, as notes, SH and then to S to S, like that. Okay. And that's an oxidation reaction. We have carbon oxygen single bonds. There's two kinds of um, compounds we talk about there. We talk about alcohols and phenols. All right. In alcohols, there's two main types of reactions there's dehydration and oxidation reactions. Dehydration forms an alkene, and you should put like from here to here, like here to here. Reminder, from there to there, H plus and heat. Or you could undergo oxidation. To form, oh sorry, I put the arrow in the wrong place. There. So you can do oxidation, and primary alcohols form aldehydes, and secondary alcohols uh, uh, produce ketones. And primary alcohols can also be further oxidized to carboxylic acids. So you might draw on this diagram some of the different functional groups that are associated with this to help you remember the patterns. So like. See how that's like the OH three and the other one of the other problems you couldn't oxidize it all. So. So hang on. So I said C. And then D. And how did I do that? Yeah. Well, cause so because it looks a little different, huh? That's yeah. a good question. So here's C. There's the H. 
and there's an H, right? So I remove that the way you might think it should be drawn. What happened to my pen? Oh, there it goes. You think it would be C H two three? Sorry, C H. Well, you drew the lines in between. Let me do that. Draw it more like. You'd have that, and then you'd have C double bond O, right? And there'd still be an H on here. So it's just kind of drawn, tilted over. This molecule is that one. You see how they're the same? Yeah. See if I can do this. I'm not sure if I can, can or not. So I get rid of that and move them off to the side here. Ah, I tore them apart. That's the same. Because if you think about it, right, it's a. Wrong clay. I don't know how to make this thing turn. There's a carbon, right? Carbon bonded to a carbon, a hydrogen, and double bonded to oxygen. That's the same pattern that we had here. So it's just that the bonds are drawn in a different way, and you have to get kind of comfortable doing that. Most of that's just practice and me drawing funny things like this, and, right? You seeing it and asking questions, and because. That's why I'm here. I get paid money to do this. All right. All right. Any other questions? Yeah. Can you explain that again? <laughs> the, whole... the problem that we just did. Yeah. Can you just show us why it's like why it would be like D and then C because C and E. Well. Yeah. So if you look at this product C, right? And, and the reactant. How many bonds to oxygen? How many bonds to oxygen? Two. How many bonds to oxygen? Three. 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 Oh, three. That's why. So another oxygen came in. Another oxygen came in from a water. Oh. But that one, you didn't lose two H's. Like I didn't lose two H's. I just lost the one H. Because if you lose the two H, it, like if, if you lose another bond here, the, uh, the, the final oxidation product that carbon can have is carbon dioxide, four bonds to oxygen. But if I do this like you do, and I think I'm pretty sure that's what happens in the citric acid cycle. If you do this, you have to disassemble it from this. Right, there's the H, and that's what got I got rid of and replaced it with this OH. But where did that come from? Yeah. Water. So this is assuming that there's just, like, in the environment. Yeah, or whatever we used to oxidize it had an oxygen on it, but typically that oxygen ultimately comes from water. So anytime we're supposed to oxidize and there's only just that one H there, we're going to end up with OH at the end? Yeah, so you go from alcohol, aldehyde, carboxylic acid. That's what those groups are called. Would you memorize those three? If you yeah. <laughs> I would absolutely memorize it okay. if I was my teacher. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I will give you problems that are similar to this. So you have to be able to spot it. I might be able to do it in, I might do bond line, do it in these condensed Lewis structures, expanded Lewis structures. You just have to be able to recognize I got more oxygens and I lost my hydrogen. Okay. All right, good. That's it.